can indulge as much as you want. You know, when you desire God, guess what? You say, I want to worship and I want to glorify God. Is it all right to indulge in the worship and glory of God? Yeah. Absolutely. Or say, oh, God is holy and I want to be as holy as he is holy. So I want to overindulge in holiness. And God's going to be like, oh, you're not being sinful enough. No, he'll be like, yeah, go ahead and be holy. Or love, you know, that one debt that we're not to leave unpaid. God's going to be like, yeah, you should love less? No. You see, overindulging in the things of God, when we desire the good things, the desire the things of God, he says, yes, enjoy those. Because those are the true things that bless. Those are the true things that make a difference. Those are the true things that are the true sources of joy. Overindulge in those things. And that's okay. That's why we want to be a people that is controlling our desires. And when we start desiring what God desires, the things of this world don't seem that impressive. Would you rather have heaven or a big house on earth? You know? Even, even Jesus says, this is where the priority lies. Matthew 6, verse 31 through 33. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We don't want to be like the pagans who desire, and they're running the wrong way from heaven, and they're running towards the wrong things, rather than running towards Christ and his kingdom and his righteousness. Where's the desire of your heart? I want you to really do this. This week, spend time writing down what you actually desire and say, do I need to change this list? Because if it's not about God and his glory, the loss and building up of the church and your own spiritual transformation to be like Jesus, you're living life wrong. And you're going to regret one day running after things that are going to break down rather than running after the best relationship you could ever have with Jesus Christ and something eternal, like your home in heaven. That's why I preach, I'm preaching like this, because I want you to really indulge in God and desire God and love Him, because that's where fulfillment will come. That's where true joy will come. I mean, this is why we keep running, we keep on have, being insane. We keep running, and crazy, we keep running after the same things, <coughs> thinking they'll make us happy, and they never do. And then we keep doing it, and then we keep doing it. When all the time God is there present saying, desire me. And if you desire me, that's where satisfaction comes from. So we need to have a self-control in our desires. And the third way that we need to control ourselves is self-control in your emotions. Like I asked you a moment ago, the worst decisions in your life are usually when you are emotional, aren't they? They're, like even if you're really happy. Have you ever been really happy and then you kind of splurged a little too much at the store? You know? Even happy in overindulgence of emotions. Or sad, or when you're really angry, or you're really hurting, or you're really depressed. Aren't those times when we hurt people the most, or do the wrong things, or make the worst decisions? It's when we're emotional. And here's the, ama here's the thing. We, we are meant to be emotional beings. God created us to be emotional beings. God is an emotional being. And sometimes we write emotions off, saying, well, we have truth. That ignores emotion. No, God created us to be emotional beings. But he wants us to be self-controlled in our emotions. I mean, having feelings of compassion and empathy and love and care, those are not bad things. And even anger at times. We have righteous indignation. As long as it's controlled... But it's, this is where we say, I, I am in control of my emotions. I'm not going to allow my emotions to control me. <coughs> That's the one you're going to choose. Do I control my emotions or do my emotions control me? And here's the thing. Sometimes we've suffered the consequences of people lacking emotional stability, haven't we? Have, has anyone ever hurt you because they did not control their emotions? Maybe it was an angry or an abusive parent because they lacked self-control, they hurt you. Maybe it was a bully in school. Maybe it was an overbearing boss at work. Maybe it was a friend who stabbed you in the back. Maybe it was a teacher who embarrassed you in the front of the class. You know, we, we, we know the consequences when people lack self-control and it hurts us. But then we also have to look in the mirror and say, maybe my lack of self-control is hurting other people and ultimately hurting God as well. 
but because I want people to be blessed, because I want people to be loved, and because I want God to be glorified, I am going to control my emotions. Emotions where we can and do the things that Scripture teaches us. You know, learning to have empathy and compassion and considering other people's viewpoints helps us control your emotions. Learning to take time to pray when feeling overwhelmed with sorrow and depression helps us to control our emotions. Learning to be wrong and turn the other cheek and forgiving helps us control your emotions. Learning to not be bitter and resolve our issues quickly before they escalate helps us control our emotions. Learning to thwart gossip and slander and refusing to spread gossip and slander or hearing it helps us control our emotions. Learning to bless and pray for others helps us control our emotions. Learning to take time and be patient with God and reflect on His Word and meditate on it helps us control our emotions. Avoiding foolish decisions or jumping to conclusions by learning from wise counselors and mentors helps us control our emotions. The Word of God is full of different ways on how we can control our emotions. Emotions are a real thing, and they're a valid thing. And at times, you are going to have reason to feel sad, and at times, you are going to have reasons to feel happy. But ultimately, we have to be in control of our emotions, or our emotions will control us, and we will make bad decisions. This is why, why the Bible says things like this. In James 1, 19-20, it says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. You can either be controlled by your anger and, and not glorify God, or you can control your anger and glorify God and have that righteous life. And as Proverbs 16.32 says, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. A person who controls himself is stronger than a mighty man. That's the amazing thing. So here's what I really need us to say. As you can see, self-control is difficult because it requires a commitment. It requires humility and honesty and transparency. It requires a discipline and a conscious decision a motivation and saying, I choose to be controlled so that I can give that control up to God. Otherwise, I allow Satan in the world to control me and I'm deceiving myself thinking I'm controlling myself. We must want to be self-controlled. That requires wisdom and maturity. The conviction, the work, and sacrificing to learning to be self-controlled is difficult. But it is the only way we can truly love God. But self-controlling our thinking, our desires, and our emotions are the ways that we are truly going to give God the control. And so that we will have the self-control to be strong against Satan in this world. And we will indulge, overindulge in the things of God which bring true joy and bring eternity and God's glory. I know it's difficult to be self-controlled and to even admit that we haven't been self-controlled. But with God's power, we believe we can be better people. We believe we can be new Christians. We believe we can bring God the glory. And we can learn to be like God because God is a self-controlled God.